Today I'm sharing over 20 rustic decor DIYs with Dollar Tree and Thrifted Inspiration. Keep watching! So we're going to start off with a square wire wreath from Dollar Tree. I've just gone ahead and wrapped the base with some burlap that I had. It's simple to do. You can watch pretty much any video to see how to do that and you just attach it with some glue. Then I'm going to take some foliage and some flowers. It's little scraps of stuff I already had that most of it came from Dollar Tree and also from Goodwill. Here's the sign. I've already taken the little hanger off of the back of it just cut it and pulled it out and then here are some more pieces of greenery so there is a front and a back see there is the wire underneath there there's a front and a back the one side is convex and one is concave you can decide which one uh, you want to use but I actually use the side of the wreath that was rounded on the top just going to attach that together with some glue. I don't want to use too much because I always take things apart and repurpose them. Just going to give that a chance to adhere. Then I'm going to take these long picks and place these around one side to give it a C shape. I'm going to use some full wire to just wrap around to attach the two wires together. You can use hot glue for this if you would like. Uh, if you want it to be permanent, that would be okay. But I want to give myself some options. So I'm going to attach it with some more floral wire, which I'm just going to bend like a, um, a hairpin, like a bobby pin. And just push it over the top of both of them and through the burlap and the wire that's on the inside of the frame. And then you just turn that over and pull it and twist it. You can then take those, uh, take your nippers or wire cutters or scissors and just cut that off if you want. I do all that toward the end. So I'm going to attach in a few more places just to keep it secure. Over the top, through the back, pull it and twist it. If the pieces come off like this, they very easily just slide back onto the pick. Easy thing to fix. So I'm going to take this mum, I believe this is what that is, put some glue on there and just attach that in the corner. And the foliage that came with that, I'm going to tuck back into there. I want to try to keep it balanced, so I'm going to do some to the left, some to the right, or some to the top and some to the side, whichever way you want to look at it. I'm just trying to find a spot underneath so that it sticks to the burlap because the burlap is got a lot of texture so it has good grip with the glue. Now I'm just going to extend that color down by putting these picks. I'm just gluing those down as well and pulling the little webs that come off of it off of it when it starts to dry. And then I've chosen two pumpkins. I chose the white one and I have a bronze pumpkin over there. I chose the bronze because the glittery wording on this is actually a brownish bronze color. So I thought that it, it looked good with that. I just threaded the picks through burlap and then put a good bit of glue on the bottom actually to hold it. 
A little more greenery here that came with the mom stems. And then I put a little, uh, there's some burlap leaves that came from Dollar Tree. Just gonna tuck those in here and there. They are wired on the back so you can actually bend those a little bit. And that's always nice because leaves are not straight. Makes it a little more realistic as far as burlap leaf goes. But there we go, and I'm happy with the results. You can always add a hanger to the back if you would like to hang it up or you can sit it down nice and clean on the back. So I appreciate you watching. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Consider sharing this with friends and give me a big like. I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye.
We're going to start off with a leaf, a wooden leaf form from Dollar Tree. I've already cut the tag and the piece of string off the top and the bottom hoop I got from Goodwill. I'm going to take some wipes. These are makeup remover wipes, but they're for sensitive skin. I use those to put in my watered down paint and that's the antiquing wax from Waverly. Just dip it in there, squeeze it out, and I'm going to use that as a stain on my leaf. Just going to be sure that I get the entire leaf, all the corners, and then also want to get the sides. And then we're going to take the ring and we're going to use the same thing, the same treatment to color this. And this is the inner ring from an embroidery hoop. I think it's a 10 or a 12 inch, but you'll know by measuring it against the leaf. You want to be sure that the leaf has contact on the side so it can be attached. All right, gonna set aside, let it dry, and once it's dry, you want to find your placement. My inspiration is from a piece of decor that I saw that came from Joann's. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of my Gorilla Glue and glue down all of those points that are connected there. And then I'm gonna use my little thankful sign from Dollar Tree, or the welcome sign, and I think the other one is blessed. You can choose which one you like. It's in a, a metal finish. Decide on the placement and then using some Gorilla Glue, I'm just going to put that down. Hot glue dries really fast on the metal, so sometimes you can't get a good connection. You can't get a good seal um, or adhesion between them. So I just decided to give this a try. It's the first time I've tried it on the metal sign and just see how it works out. Plus you have a little more time with placement too. You can move it around a little bit if you need to. I'm just going to press it down, then I'm going to put a ruler on top and just this little truck sign that I have on top of that until it dries. Once it's dry, I'm going to put my string back through the tip of the leaf and then I'm going to hang it as if it is hanging from the embroidery hoop. I'm going to tie that knot and then slip it around back and trim off the edges. And that's all it takes. That's all you have to do for this beautiful little piece. I'd love for you to subscribe. I have lots more fall decor videos and hauls coming up. And I do appreciate your support very, very much. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Watch. So we have some items here that we put together. First, we're going to take this little pumpkin with the 3D layering and pull off the little bow that was on there. It's a little raffia bow. I'm just taking my metal, um, my metal ruler to try to pick off that glue and then my sanding block. And those items also came from Dollar Tree. This is a thrifted sign. There's a Christmas sign on the back. We're going to use, there's a Christmas sign on the other side and we're going to use the blank back side as our front. So first off, I'm just going to stain this pumpkin. I've used some Waverly Antique Wax and watered that down. It makes a really good stain and it's not stinky and it's easy to clean up. Just using a facial wipe, dipping that in there, squeezing it out, and going to go over all the parts of this pumpkin with this. Then I found these furniture scratch, I guess, correction pins at Dollar Tree also. They come in a three pack, so I'm just testing my colors here on the side to see which one I want to use. 
And this is trial and error. I've never done this before for crafting, but I wanted to give it a shot, so I was very nervous. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that the it was still damp from the stain that I had just put on it because I wanted to be able to blend those colors together. So I'm just taking the pen and marking on here. It's actually a marker. So I really didn't know what to expect. I'm kind of kind of worried here. Then I'm going to take the piece of cloth that still has some stain on it. And since everything is still damp, it helps those colors to blend together. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other raised areas. There were moments when it kind of dried out or didn't want to evenly release the, the color from the marker. So that's why I was kind of scratching around on the side there. I don't mind, and it's not perfect, but I don't mind that it has that kind of watercolor look. Um, it really doesn't bother me. And the more you dip into that stain and um, kind of squeeze it out and just rub over that marker, it kind of blends that out a little bit. So it's not, all those lines aren't as noticeable. But since I'm kind of always going for the rustic farmhouse theme, it doesn't bother me that it doesn't look perfect. And that's one of those things that is important to me to convey on my channel is that my channel name is making it my own. It's because I want to make something that makes me happy and it brings me joy. And I want you guys to find the same inspiration when you watch my videos to know that things don't have to be perfect. and They don't have to be the color scheme someone else likes. And they don't have to be anything anybody else likes but you because it's your home and you want it to be unique to you. Okay, so I'm taking the darkest marker here and I'm just coloring in the area where the stem is. You can see some spots also where the adhesive, I guess, in the production of this pumpkin kind of bled over onto the wood and you, it's, it leaves some uneven spots. But again, that's okay. It's rustic. We can deal with that. All right, so now you want to let that pumpkin dry. I'm going to take this Krylon metallic copper spray paint and go outside and spray paint this harvest metal sign. All right, and while my harvest sign is drying, I'm going to take some of my Gorilla Glue and put it in my glue gun and make some rings around on here. I don't like to use too much glue because I like to take things apart. And if I want to use this plaque again for something else, I can easily pop that off without breaking anything or making too big of a, a mess. So I'm just going to press that down and I'm choosing my ribbons. You guys have got to forgive me because I am still trying to get used to camera angles and I don't have exactly the right type of tripod for this so there's blurriness in some of my pictures that's kind of out of focus and I'm also doing some of these uh, projects out of frame. And I apologize for that, and I'm going to try to make it up with lots and lots of content so that you'll be happy with me again. But here I'm just making a simple bow. There are lots of videos on YouTube on how to do this, and I can certainly make a video on some simple bows. If that's something you like, just let me know in the comments. Just making sure that the loops are the same size, and I measured the tail on that, that black down there is a... a the sticky part off of a wooden measuring tape or a measuring a ruler, good grief, what am I saying, that I got from Dollar Tree and I just stuck it down there so it would be easier to use. And I wanted to make sure my tails are even and that my bow loops are even. Then I'm going to add a little bit smaller but the same style with the green ribbon right on top. Simple, simple, just two loop bow on both sides. The truck ribbon has two loops and two tails, and the green ribbon has two loops and two tails. Sliding that around to make sure they're even. 
I'm not the best bow maker, but I think I can get by. Okay, so cutting that off. I use the pipe cleaner to put my bows together in the middle, and now I'm just going to dovetail the ends. It gives it a pretty look. And you can see I got up and fixed my camera angle, and my focus is a little bit better. So there's my, oh, I used a zip tie, not a pipe cleaner. I'm going to use my glue and put it, I know you can't see, but it's up there above where the steam is for the pumpkin. You can see up there for the corner. Now I want to embellish this bow by putting in a couple of flowers and some greenery. You can use any color you want. You can use oranges if you want orange. You could use cream colors. You could even use red or no flowers at all. You could use berry picks. Just whatever you like. I just shortened the stem there. I'm going to add the greenery back to it with a little glue. And then some pretty leaves that match the pumpkins. I don't use a ton of glue, just a little. We want options. We want to keep our options open here. So a little bit of glue will do that. Alright, just get that all together and play with your bow so that it's not crunched down. Because in the process of putting on your flowers, it's going to get smushed a little bit because you just fluff it back out. It's real easy. There's wire in the ribbon so it's it's easy to fluff back up. You can make the tails longer on your bows if you like them longer or whatever floats your boat. Okay, so the harvest sign is dry and I'm just going to put that back down. I have some Gorilla Glue sticks now and um, I decided to use this instead of the gel that I've used before. And it did fine. It didn't dry too fast and I was able to move it around a little bit so I was comfortable with that. And I just went underneath some of the thicker points because I don't want Libs of glue poking out everywhere. I want it to look nice and finished. And the spot was driving me crazy where the glue came off there, so I went ahead and put a leaf on top of that by the stem to just cover that up. And that is it. I'm fluffing again. All right, so this is our completed wreath. You can still use the back for something else. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe and come back and watch more. I love fall. It's my favorite season and I have lots more in store for you. Comment, subscribe, and like. Bye. I want to start off with one of these uh, decorative posters that I got from Dirt Cheap that actually originally came from uh, Target and then two of these Valentine signs that came from Dollar Tree. I've just taken the little metal hearts off of that for another project. I'm going to glue it together with popsicle sticks and some Gorilla Glue sticks. This is just to keep them firmly together without folding tape or glue wouldn't be strong enough for this so we want it to be to be able to hold the weight of that gather sign once we put that on there. Just showing you how to do that. There are bigger popsicle sticks you can use if you need to. Alright, so we we're just flipping it over and I'm going to take out this poster. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Um, so I'm just going to lay it out and mark off the size. And then I'm going to cut out that piece of paper and put the rest of it aside for another project. Okay, so when you have wrinkled paper like this, if you'll gently fold against where that wrinkle is, you can press some of that out, but we'll get it all out later. Okay, so I have overhang on both sides and both ends, and that's okay. I started with the glue stick, and I was unhappy with the coverage. It seemed kind of sticky and gross. So I've got some spray adhesive that also came from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to spray that. 
pretty good coat on there. You can see in some spots it looks kind of wet. And then I'll lay that poster paper back down. It's thin. It, it, it's not a really thick. It's not like cardstock. So it's pretty, pretty easy to work with and get the wrinkles out. I'm just trying to press it down to make sure there's no air bubbles and to make sure that it's sticking well. And it looks like it's repositionable, so that's great. And I'm just using my Dollar Tree ruler to press out any wrinkles or bubbles that might be in there. I like this better than Mod Podge because you do get a lot of nasty bubbles and um, you don't have that with this adhesive or with glue sticks really um, as far as my look has been anyway okay so once you've given that time to dry you're just going to take a sanding block from Dollar Tree and just sand down from the top on the sides it's going to give you a nice smooth edge and it will look like it came that way just like it was store bought just keep sanding, try not to pull, you don't want to tear anything, but if, if a piece is sprayed and hanging there, you can kind of give it a little gentle pull and take that off. And you want to do that all the way around top, bottom, and both sides. I learned this trick from other YouTubers that I watch that do craft videos. Okay, so I used chalk paint to, change, to paint my gather sign. I used about three coats, um, and that's, that gather sign did come from Dollar Tree. It's kind of heavy. So I wanted to get an idea of where I wanted to place it, and also I knew that I wanted some type of a frame, so I'm using these tumbling tower game blocks that you can get at Dollar Tree. It's just in the kids' toy section, and trying to get an idea of spacing and the layout here. It's easier to, to give it a dry run than it is to glue it down and then decide you don't like it or it doesn't fit correctly because these blocks are not always the same measurement. They're not always the same size. So you just need to be, be careful about that, be mindful about that. So if you wanted to do it all the way around the edges like this, you certainly could, but you can you can change it and do it any way you want. And I decided I just wanted it on the top and bottom, kind of like um, the other wall hangings that you see that look more like a like a scroll or something. Um, sort of like that idea. So I'm just using my glue. I'm lining it up. I don't want to put it between each block because it will cause some bulk in there and I, I want it to be kind of a smooth even line so I'm just going to put that Gorilla Glue stick just going to apply that to the bottom and then to the board lining it up between the edge of the board and the block that's right beside it that'll give you a nice straight edge but if you really want it to be super straight you can put a ruler down there you can put a, a long piece of wood under it or whatever um, a level straight edge whatever you want to do but this is farmhouse, so it's not intended to be perfect anyway. As you will see, when I put my last block down, there's a little bit of extra edge there that it didn't cover. So I'll use the same amount on the top and bottom. That still happens. So I'm going to use some of this Gorilla Glue and go around on this sign, which, I, as I said before, it's, it's a little heavy and bulky, so you want to be sure that you get a good application of glue on this, but not enough to squish out when you press it down. Try to stay in the center of your letters. And I'm just going to gently press it down to make sure that it sticks. And I've decided that I want to use um, like a rope on the sides. I have this thick yarn that I've used before in the pumpkin video and I'll link that video for you so you can watch that. And I'm just tying a knot on each end, whatever length you want, however far down you want it to hang. And I'm just going to glue the knot to the block on the top and on the bottom 
of each side. I'm just putting my clamp there so it doesn't move when I'm scooting it around to keep it in the camera. So there we go there. And then I'm going to go right along the edge with a bead of glue to put that rope down. It's kind of at an angle, kind of on the edge, kind of on the side. And I do like the way that looks. All right, then I'm going to take a hula skirt that I'm using as raffia, and I'm going to tie a simple little bow. I just took a, a chunk of it and cut it off and then tied my little bow. Yeah, I'm weird about bows. I like for things to be symmetrical, so I'm playing around there to make sure that my, my rabbit ears are the same size. And I decided that I want to place those on the sides. Maybe make it look like it's supporting the rope on the sides or the yarn on the sides. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So here's that hula skirt. So you can see that it did come off of that hula skirt. And here you can see how I'm tying it. And that is it. Once you get that put together, compare it to the other bow, trim it up, glue it down, and it is complete. And I love it. My pretty little gather sign for Thanksgiving and fall. And I hope that you will try it yourself. I hope you'll subscribe. We've got lots more things coming. And I appreciate you viewing. Please like it if there's something that you liked in this video. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.
We're going to start off with one of these plain little raw summer hats. You can get these at Dollar General when they go on clearance at the end of summer. But you can get them at other stores as well, or you could thrift a hat. I'm going to start off by gently removing the hat band that's there. It's braided and it's pretty, so I think we'll keep that and we'll use that later. Okay, so then you want to choose your ribbon because we're going to make a hat band. So I thought this pretty fall ribbon from Dollar Tree would be good. I'm going to use this and I'm going to layer it with green. And here I am just putting a little bit of glue on here to layer these two pieces together. I just trimmed the wire edge off of the, the truck one so that it would be a little bit smaller. Then I'm just going to fit it around from the front to the back and I'm going to glue it in a crisscross sort of in the back. You have to gently put this thing together so you don't burn yourself, but you want to kind of put a little glue on and then cup the ribbon down, and add a little more and cup it down. If you need to trim pieces of it, just like a little snip so it'll lay flat, you can do that too. I don't have any footage of that, but I did it in two or three curves, I think. So we're just going to lay that over and then I'm going to trim off the little longer piece of green there into a dovetail. Alright, then I'm going to take these thrifted picks that I got from Goodwill and they coordinate pretty nicely with the colors that I have on the hat band there. So I'm just going to trim these off. I'll plumb off the stem and then trim them off of the little pieces that stick them together. This is a piece of cording, I guess, from Dollar Tree. Just wanted to add that on there. But you really can't see it after I get all the leaves on. And you're just going to take those leaves and kind of alternate your dark with your light colors. It makes each different color stand out better if you do it that way. Or you can make ombre or whatever you want to do. Whatever's good for you. So you'll see I kind of pick them up, move them around, and decide what goes where the best. Really doesn't matter. It's rustic. Whatever you want to do. So I'm not going to glue it completely down everywhere because I want the leaves to have still a little bit of a little bit of bend and flexibility so they look like, you know, leaves that fall off the trees. So a little glue on the leaf before it and a little glue on the hat to hold it down. And I keep going until we have completed the circle there with our leaves on it. All right, now I'm just going back in and adding a few little extra pieces that I had where I felt like I needed a little change of color in my pattern. Just added a few pieces. And then these little sprigs also came from Dollar Tree pulled them off of a bigger pick and just bent them around and then glued them down. Okay, so I'm going to take this strip of thrifted burlap, fold it over on itself, and then I am going to, I want to make a bow with it, so I'm going to fold it over about an inch onto itself and then gather it up with my fingers. Just like that. And that's going to be the base of our bow and I'm going to use a zip tie to put around there and hold it in place. We'll make the tails next. Okay, so that's what the little bow looks like. And we're going to trim off the excess. And now the tails, I'm just going to have a longer piece of a thinner one of a thinner strip of burlap and I just used a piece of wire twisted around that and then uh, glued it to the back of that bow. So now I'm just trying to decide what kind of a bow I want to make on the back to go under there and I think I'm gonna do I think it's called a funky bow. It's very easy to make although you will not be able to see me make it in this video. I'm gonna cut two strips that are the same length. I'm going to go fold it completely in half 
and then go down about three inches, gather that up, and then hold it between in my hand between my thumb and my finger there. Then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other, bunch it up, and then tuck it right next to the other one. So the ears are up and the tails are down. I went ahead and used a zip tie to wrap around the middle of those, and you can see clearly now what I did. And I'm going to dovetail the ends, which is cutting them in a triangle upward, outside in, upward, and then that will give me two loops and four tails. With this type of bow, you don't necessarily use the tails to hang down under it. You put the tails in the bow. It's part of the decoration. It's part of the bow. So you'll see kind of what I mean, I think, in just a minute. really trying to get an idea but now you can see how I fluffed it out two on the bottom and two are on the top sides where the bow is so it's only two loops and I wanted that because it's a little bit flatter and it will accommodate this other bow on top of it a little bit better so just hot glue that bow to the center of the other bow All right, after you've given that a minute to glue, you can just go ahead and cut those ends there also, and dovetail. And then you can fluff it out how you like it. I decided I wanna put a pumpkin in the center of this bow, so I'm going to seed it on some leaves. Since the burlap is a light color, I use the darker leaf underneath and then a green leaf on top. Then I'm going to take that pumpkin with a good bit of glue and stick it down and then I just tucked two of the smaller leaves under the edge there. So remember that hat band? We're going to use it as a hanger. So I'm just moving it to the top although you're seeing it upside down and I'm going to glue that on and I've decided to use this Dollar Tree burlap wreath, um, <laughs> leaf to go on the top in the center of the hat. And that is it. That's all she wrote. So we have a combination of Dollar Tree and thrifted items in this video. A little pumpkin is also thrifted. It came off of a another project that I've already done and you should be seeing soon and I think it's pretty you could almost say this is boho rustic because it's on the hat so there's the hanger what do you think is this something that you would try does it match the style in your house what style do you like comment below give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I hope that you subscribe for more content just as wonderful as this piece. Thanks again for watching. All right, if you take a look in the little card up top, you'll see that this was a project I have done previously. I'm gonna link that for you so you can watch and see all the details of how I put the original project together. Now I'm just flipping through another one of these calendars from Dollar Tree and choosing another picture that I want to use. And I think I'm going to use the little red truck. It was a toss up between that and the pumpkins. I'm going to remove the wires that I have that are holding the little bouquet in the side because we're going to change this out with something different. So you better keep watching to see how that turns out. just carefully unwinding this so I can take it out without tearing my little burlap pouch. All right, so we're gonna turn it over, undo the little binders in the back, and lift this off. The front of this is plexiglass, 
rather than glass. So if you have glass, be very, very careful here. Just gonna set that aside and begin to remove this picture. In the first video, you can see that I put this down with some spray adhesive, the picture itself, and you're gonna see the mess and how I do it differently in just a moment. Just taking the jute off that I had on there before. We're just gonna use something different to trim it this time. The spray adhesive is from Dollar Tree, so if you're wondering on how well it sticks down, take a look at this. I'd say it works pretty well. In retrospect, I probably could have just left this on here and just went right over the top, but I didn't know if that black would show through on the lighter sections of the new picture that I've chosen, so I went ahead and tore off as much as I could remove. So see, it was between those two. Eh, I'm kind of a crazy pumpkin lady and I have pumpkins everywhere in my decor. So I thought, why not the little red truck? Are you a fan of the little red truck? Okay, so I've chosen the Autumn Harvest Homegrown. This time I'm going to use double stick tape. I don't want to use glue or Mod Podge because it will show the lines that are on the back, that grid that's on the back. I don't want that to show. So I'm just going to use my double stick tape and put it down. There's a little, I don't know, residue from the picture that didn't come off that's on the edge for some reason. So I'm just taking this little nail file from Dollar Tree and just kind of filing that off. The hole in the top can be easily fixed with a white chalk pen. I'm just gonna fill that one in. You can barely see it now. I tried to decide whether I wanted to use the original jute again. I also tried some orange jute and some ribbon that had some burlap in it, but I thought that this black, I think it's a satin ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. I think it works better. It makes a great frame and it looks good with the, the dark, bold lettering on the side. So I'm just using, again, dots of glue at the top and the bottom. So when I decide to redo this, it can be easily removed without tearing my backing up. Easy enough. And don't worry about the uneven edges there because I'll clean that up in just a moment. So I'm just trimming those off. I think there's a way that you can use a lighter to kind of heat bind the edges, but I didn't have a lighter down there, so I'll just make it work like this. It shouldn't fray too much inside the frame, and it'll be indoors, so it should be fine. So to make a more finished edge, I've wrapped that ribbon around the top and the bottom, just around the edge of the frame, and used a little hot glue to keep it in place. Gonna be doing that on the top and the bottom. I hope everybody has been able to find these calendars. I know it's been kind of hit and miss in my areas and I was late getting them, but I am very, very happy with the ones that I did get. And of course, the next time they come out with some beautiful calendars like this, I will be buying extras so that I can share them with other people. So I think a lot of people missed out on these. If you don't have these particular ones that I've used, you can always use something else that you like in here. Or maybe even print your own sign. You use a piece of wrapping paper or anything. So I think it looks nice and finished now. You can go ahead and set that back down in the frame and fix the fasteners back. And again, for details on how to make this bow and how to do the original project, just follow the link 
and you can see the original. All right, so now I've got to find something to put over here in my side. And I have some thrifted, a thrifted pick with a bunch of different size pumpkins and some, some autumn leaves. And I'm just going to put that in there and use a piece of matching pipe cleaner or Chanel stem. You can use floral wire, you can use um, any scraps of wire anything that you want to use to hold it down in your little pocket. And this works for me. You don't want to use anything that's too heavy because it will pull the pocket down and your your floral pick will like flop forward when you try to hang it up. So you want to be sure that it's kind of lightweight. And you could always use a little bit of um, hot glue or something on the back, just a few dots to maybe hold that to the frame. It's not gonna stick to that plexiglass or the glass. You know, hot glue does not stick well to that stuff, but it will stick to your frame or to your burlap pocket if you need to do that. Then I have another piece of a pick that I believe came from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna add that in the places where it looks like it needs a little extra oomph. Also, this particular pick had some pumpkins that had fallen off, and you'll see me just put um, those back on there. If you have something thrifted, be sure that you pick off the berries that look like they've been picked away by birds. If they're white or sad looking, just go ahead and take that off, because you, you want your projects to look high end and um, unique, and maybe that boutique look then you'll need to remove the things that clearly show that they're old and used. So this pumpkin, in order to make it sit down, I've just decided to cut one piece of it off and put some hot glue on it. And I'm gonna glue it in the middle of my bow. And that is going to complete this project. So this is a makeover for my original sunflower calendar makeover. And I used thrifted items, and you'll just have to see how that how that first one turned out because it was really pretty. But this one will give it a run for its money, I think. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you subscribe. I have lots more ideas, and I, I love farmhouse rustic styles. So if it's what that's what you like, then you be sure that you stick around so you can see more of that through the holidays and then beyond. Thanks for subscribing. And for watching, give it a thumbs up if you're still into that red truck, if you're loving the nice cooler weather. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Okay, so I'm using this sign that I got from Dollar Tree. It's just a, one of those thin wooden pumpkins and I'm using two different types of ribbon from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to use my sanding block and I'm just going to sand off all the edges and make my surface nice and smooth so that it will take the stain as evenly as possible. And then the letter that I have there is just something that I got from Dirt Cheap and it came out of their Christmas section, I guess. This is my Waverly Antique Wax. I'm going to take it, add a little bit of water, and mix it well. Then I'm going to use a baby wipe, dip it in, squeeze it out, and just begin to wipe this on. I'm gonna go with the grain of the wood The stain just is so pretty. It makes it look so nice. It really brings out the natural wood tones. You can see all the little stripes and lines. You could leave it plain if you wanted to, or you could paint it. I'm gonna go around the edges also. so that I'll have any of the original color showing. Want a nice, even color all the way around. I'm 
So with the Dollar Tree, you can see over there the little stripe on the side. That's just the way it goes with these signs. Sometimes you can get a perfect piece, sometimes you don't. I'm just going to take my, my finger in there, take a little more, dip into it, and just make some curves and contours in my pumpkin. Just pressing down with my finger and dragging it down in the normal shape of a pumpkin. And then before it dries all the way, I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. Gives it a little depth and dimension. All right, I think that'll work well. So now I'm going to let that dry and I'm just going to take some of this lightweight spackling that came from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna fill in that hole in the top of that letter. Originally there was a red ribbon there. Um, it was an ornament for a Christmas tree, I believe. And I don't need it, so I'm just gonna fill it in. I'm gonna flip it over after I try to smooth it out on the top. And because it was such a big space, um, you won't see this part. I actually took a piece of uh, white tape and put that across the hole in the back so that the spackling wouldn't fall out. Now, here is my bow making tool that I made, and I am just going to use that to make just a rather simple bow here. This ribbon is gorgeous. It came from Dollar Tree. It is really, really pretty. Very rustic, and it is wired ribbon. Okay, so normally you would want to twist it to keep the nice side up. But as I got to looking here, both sides are pretty on this ribbon. Both of them are printed and neither one of them is less attractive than the other. So you actually don't have to twist it all unless you just want to. So I'm going to make four inch loops on my bows. And I'm going to pull that end around so I can make sure also that my tails are even. Sorry about my voice. I'm having uh, some allergy issues right now. I always do in the fall, so yeah, I sound kind of uh, weekly today. That would be why. Okay, and so here is some bronzy copper looking polka dot ribbon that also came from Dollar Tree. Same thing here. Both sides are pretty. You don't have to twist it at all, but I'm, I'm new to this whole bow maker thing, so I just wanted to make sure I'm doing everything right and representing it correctly to you. I'll also add the video where I made this bow maker in the cards and in the description box so you can find it and watch it if you want to make one for yourself. Okay, so I decided to add a third ribbon. This one is a scrap that I had. And you can get this ribbon at Dollar Tree. It's probably where I originally got mine from. The bottom ribbon is five inches, the top one is four, and then well, the middle one is four and the top one is three so that it would be stacked. As you can see there, they're stacked and layered so you can see each one. I'm going to go ahead and dovetail each one of these. Just cutting a slit from the outside upward inward. See, from the outside. Well, here, i got to go backwards and confuse everybody. Sorry about that. You get the point. Got it? Nothing to it. All right, so I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner. I'm going to lift up just a little on that fabric or on my ribbon and slip this underneath. I'm gonna press it down, give it a twist to hold it, and then remove it from the dowels. Okay, so in the center there, I've just made a little tube or a loop, and I'm going to run that pipe cleaner through there and wrap it around the center so that it gives a nice finished look to the bow. So see there, I've taken off the pipe cleaner, still holding everything in place, slipped it through the loop, 
and I am going to fasten it in the back. I'm not going to trim it down though because the, those ends of the pipe cleaner will be used to wrap around the stem of the pumpkin and also it will serve as a hanger for this if you want to use it for a wreath. As always, you want to fluff out your bow. That's the benefit of having a wired ribbon. It'll keep everything nicely in place. Just gonna put this on here and twist this around to secure it. And then, I don't think you'll see it in the video, but I actually make one more loop in there to use as a hanger. But keep it low so that that orange hanger doesn't stick out above your project. Now at any point if you decide you want to use a dot or two of hot glue to put down those um, the tails of your bows, you can do that to keep them off of your letter. And then I'm going to send her my letter. Originally I had put it where I thought the center was by looking at the end of the letter there, the P, but actually the bulk of the letter is on the other side of the loop. So I'm going to just scoot it over so it is actually in the center of that pumpkin. And then I've taken one of these, that you can get these at Dollar Tree, they're these sparkly glittery mesh looking leaves but they're hard plastic. They come in two packs and it is one of the colors that's in that bow underneath so I just went ahead and used that on the top. This is a thankful sign. It was originally just a galvanized looking color as you can see here on the back and I took some Rust-Oleum uh, copper spray paint and just gave that one good coat of spray paint and then let it dry for an hour. Then what I'm going to do here to fix this thankful sign is put on a little bit of the Dollar Tree um, fix all adhesive and then a couple of dots of hot glue to hold it in place until that adhesive had set up well. And I'm just going to put that down here. I did have a little bit of the glue poke out around my letters. It's clear so it's not that big of a deal but I want to get that off before it dries completely so I'm just using this little stick that I have and, and cleaning that up a little. It has been one heck of a year, hasn't it? I wanted to use this sign as a representat representation of what I'm thankful for, and that's my family. Um, we have so much to be thankful for. So much loss this year and so much negativity, and you know, we, we have to be reminded from time to time that there's so much that we do still have to be thankful for and to be grateful for, and we find joy in the small things. And so that's, that's what I want to think about when I look at this, this piece. I'm also thankful for all of you who are my viewers and who have helped me to make my channel grow. I have over 100 subscribers now and I'm so excited. I hope that if you're watching this and it's your first time by that you'll subscribe. And you'll stick around and be part of our little YouTube family. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. We're going to start off with some planks that you're just going to put together with hot glue and popsicle sticks. You can get these rectangular signs pretty much anywhere at Dollar Tree. You can just put them together, use the back side to get a solid piece, or you can use some scraps like I did. You're going to take an embroidery hoop frame and we're going to put that on top. That's going to be the base for our wreath. I'm taking just little bits of materials that I think might work for the rustic look I'm going for. I'm just kind of placing them to get an idea of where I might want them. I thought that we could make this look like a pumpkin and use this little drawer pull as a top, a stem. So we got some burlap pieces, some jute twine, some ribbon, most of this stuff came from Dollar Tree and from Goodwill. We're going to take this little harvest sign, which is kind of a galvanized look. 
We want it to be a little more rustic, so I'm going to take some brown paint. And I started off by kind of dabbing and brushing the paint on. But I soon realized that to give it a rustic, sort of rusted, been out in the weather kind of look, that it worked better with kind of a up and down motion, just dotting it on, patting it on there. And it really did end up looking like a rusted piece. Gonna get some good coverage and leave it on my little scrap of white paper, put it aside to let it dry. Now I'm gonna need to make a hanger to put this on the board. So I'm just making just a little regular, a plain little easy tie, wrapping it around the clamp. And we're gonna hot glue it to the back of the board. I kinda want it in the center of the board. So I want to make sure that I have enough room. Just going to put a dot there. And then a little piece of scrap ribbon over the top of that to make sure that it doesn't come loose. I'm not sure of how much weight will be on the wreath and I don't want it to pull loose. So it's in the center of the board. I've got my placement right there and I'm just gonna cut these leaf pieces apart and again, put my pieces down. Surely I'm not the only one who does this. I play with it quite a bit before I get it exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna take some of this uh, pipe cleaner. It's just a scrap that I had and use it to secure this to the wreath. You can use hot glue too, you can use floor wire or any little, you could even use jute and glue if you wanted to, but I feel like this gives me a little more surface area too to build on. So I wanted to have a variation in color, so I thought maybe these lighter colored green leaves would look nice in here on top of the whatever those pieces are under there. I don't know the name, I apologize for that. And then I love the variation of color in these leaves. And these, I believe, are called grapevine leaves. This stuff came from um, the leaves and foliage came from Goodwill. I'm just gonna glue it down where I think I want it. I'm trying to keep it balanced by putting close to the same amount of bulk on both sides of the wreath. And I want to be sure to keep that center section with the, where I wrapped it, I want to keep that kind of open so that I can put that knob back there that came off the drawer. Now because we have that chenille stem there, it does give me a little more room to put the knob and I want to leave it open that way. I realized my colors were kind of blending a little bit too much, so I want to break that up by adding a couple of these darker leaves. I'm just pulling off the little web that always gets all over everything when you use hot glue. I'm gonna put that glue there, a good amount of it, and then stick that down and it's going to be on top of the leaves, the chenille stem and the stems underneath it so it has a good secure hold. Now I was just trying to decide if I wanted it to be a diagonal, if I wanted it to be side to side. I really, really wasn't certain how I wanted this to look, so I'm just playing around with the placement again. I do that quite a bit. But I've decided that my drawer pull stem is kind of disappearing into the background, so I'm going to take this kind of a peach color, I guess, but it matches well with the color that's on the leaves. So I'm just going to take that, maybe pastel orange if you want to call it that, and make a simple bow. 
and then I'm going to trim it down and then glue it underneath the what's going to be our pumpkin stem. All right, so now I've decided I want the burlap to go side to side and I need to try to get that even because it would drive me nuts if I did not get it on there even. And look how nice the harvest rusty looking paint job turned out. I think that looks really good. So I'm just going to take a little glue and attach both sides. Careful not to burn yourself. If you have those little pink fingertip things from Dollar Tree, it'd be a good time to put those on because that glue goes right through. I'm going to add a piece of the peach right on top of that so that my little harvest metal piece doesn't disappear into the background. Just pressing that down in there and trimming off the extra that wrapped around the back. Just gives it a cleaner finish. All right, so now I'm just going to add a little glue. Be careful, these things get really hot. And then quickly put that down so that the glue doesn't dry before it's placed. And I'm just going to press it down a little bit. Just make sure that glue has got a good grip. And there you go, she's all finished. The only other thing you might want to consider if you're not going to sit this on a shelf is that you might want to put a sawtooth hanger in the back or some type of a piece of twine or something to hang it if you want to hang it on a wall. But I think that it turned out beautifully. It is my favorite piece that I have made so far this year and I'm very excited to do some pieces that will complement this and it'll look great in my decor later. But I will show you how to use that later on. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to subscribe. All right, so I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree witch hat form. I'm gonna take a piece of white board that came from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna trace out the cone top part. And I'm going to be cutting that out. I wanna get some structure to this thrifted piece of burlap scrap that I have here and I don't want you to be able to see through it so this is going to make it opaque. We're just going to lay the form on top. I'm going to make a little slit for the bottom. You don't have to do this. You could cut it all flush if you wanted but I think this will give it a little more room to make it stick down and I don't want anything coming loose in case it's outside so I'm going to take some just regular old tape and tape everything in place. You could use any type of adhesive that you wanted. You could use hot glue, you could do all that, but I just didn't feel like the mess today. So this tape did the job perfectly. So now we have the top structure for our witch's hat. I'm gonna take this scrap here and just glue that down. Now I'll be trimming up so I don't have too much bulk on the back of this. Be sure since it's not glued down that it's not slipping over where you don't have enough to glue down. There's one little space where I, I really pushed it. Cut it a little too short, but I made it work. See that little corner? Not very much to stick down there. But learn from my mistake. Now I'm just protecting my fingertips. Because this glue is really, really hot, you can use a little spatula or a stick or anything like that. Just be sure that you don't get your fingers on this. The burlap is, has lots of little holes in it and that glue will bubble right through there and get you. All right, I'm just using a clamp to hold that in place and it worked fine. Then I'm gonna take these pipe cleaners. These are the black ones 
from Dollar Tree in the Halloween section. And I'm going to be marking this mesh at 10 inches. I'm gonna show you how I make my first roll. The black and white check, or buffalo check, is actually out of the Christmas section, so that was pretty cool. And it feels like a better quality than this Halloween mesh. I should have gotten more for sure. So I'm just rolling this. It's about the diameter. The tubes are ending up about the diameter of a quarter. And I'm just going to roll these together and put the rough side down. And then there you go. There's the bundle. All right. I'm going to make little pom-poms to put on my wreath. And as usual, I'm slightly out of frame over there. All you do is take a couple of feet of it and wrap it around your hand. Then you're going to slip it off. You're going to take a piece of pipe cleaner or string or jute cord or whatever you want to use, even floral wire, if that's what you wanted to use. And you're going to wrap around about an inch on the bottom. All right. So do that good and tight because you're going to be cutting here in a minute. All right, you just go through the bottom and cut it, and there you go. It'll just puff right out for you. I'm going to make several of these. I think I ended up with three or four of these. Cutting through the bottom loop there, bluffing it out, and then just trimming off the, to make it even. Okay, so I have a bunch of those little bundles. You know, you've seen me use those before. They just have the little pipe cleaner around them. And you're going to start filling up the bottom all around the brim of this witch's hat. Play around with it. Move them around. There's really no rhyme or reason to where you put these bundles as long as you don't have any empty spots. And I didn't like how those lined up, so I'm just moving that down to the next row. If you get enough on there, they won't move around on the wire. If you if they're sliding around, then you don't have enough in there. So just keep adding them, get it thick, and just keep going with it. I think I ended up making probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, probably 15 of these. But you know, you can just make more if you need to make more. And I just alternated with the orange, the checkerboard, and the black. You do that all the way to the end. Then I'm going to use these little pom-poms that I made with um, the sheer fabric. And just poking those in there randomly. Oh, she's dropping by a little early. I'm not done with your hat yet. And just place them wherever you want to. Now we're going to work on the hat band because the witch has to have a band on her hat. So I'm going to start off with the Dollar Tree ribbon on the bottom. So far everything we've used has come from the Dollar Tree with an exception of the burlap. So we're just trying to decide where I want this, and I want it high enough up that it's not sitting in the mesh tubes down there because then I won't be able to see it. So again, safety first, protect your fingers. This ribbon coordinates very nicely with the the rest of the little the bottom of the hat there. Okay, so I'm gonna take this black and white chevron ribbon and I'm gonna put that on the top. It's not quite as wide, so you can still see the ribbon that's underneath it. You can see the pattern pretty well. Just gonna glue that one down right in the center of it, and then I'll trim it up to make it look neater.
This would obviously be put on a solid wall or door. If you have a glass door, you're gonna wanna do something else to cover up the bag. Maybe wrap the entire thing in burlap, put the band all the way around. Now this is just a little sign that I have that I got ages ago. And I'm going to make a little bow to put next to it. So I want that little blackboard sign to be a an adornment for the witch's hat. And it's just, it's wood. It's kind of lightweight. So I've just made a little makeshift bow here. I'll add a third, lip, uh, third loop shortly. And put some hot glue down on here. All right, and now we're gonna make a little bow for the top. You can see two 12 inch pieces with a piece of that mesh tubing there. I'm gonna wrap it with a pipe cleaner. I'm gonna use this on the end of the hat, right up there on the tip. So I just chose some of these 3D stickers that I've had in my scrapbook pile, and I've put that down in the center of my little embellishment there on the hat band. Now I'm using some of this base filler to add a couple of little bubbles here and there. Forgive my dog. The yard people are here. She's not happy about it. Okay, so you see the little bow on the end? I just took the bow that we made and then I stuck a little one of those pom-poms right in the center of it. And then I'm going to put one of these little balls right in the center of that. Fluff everything out. Make sure that you have a good representation of all of your colors there. You don't want anything mashed down or disappearing. And then to hang it, I'm just going to use a pipe cleaner with hot glue and a little piece of scrap paper. And just made a little loop there like a hairpin. and secure that down. This little witch's hat is going to fit in wonderfully with the rest of my orange, black, and white theme for Halloween 2020. I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope you'll go get one of these before they disappear so you can do your own craft. Thanks for watching. Be sure you subscribe for more, and I'll see you again soon. Beginning footage was damaged, so I've just had to piece these together for you. I'm going to start off with letting you know that the materials that we're using are all from the Dollar Tree. We're going to use a variety of these mesh rolls. I've chosen black and orange. I'm using 12 inch pieces and we're going to make little rolls and bundles of three. First I'll show you how to make them. Then you can stop the video and go ahead and make those and get them ready for the next step. So here's our tie or our pipe cleaner. I'm going to cut that in half. The little clamp is from the crafter's corner, crafter square. So we're just going to roll this up. We're going to put the frayed edge, the cut edge to the bottom. First the black, then the orange, and then another black. Actually what I have on my wreath is the black and orange combination rather than the orange, but I ran out for the demonstration. I'm just going to show you on the orange mesh. Okay, so if you can see there, that's about as big around as a quarter. All of my rough edges are on the bottom. Now I'm just going to squeeze these together in my fingers. I'm going to press them down into the middle of that stem and then give it a twist. Okay.
Okay, so you're gonna need at least 18. You can do more than that if you want your wreath to be more full. Here is your wreath form. You're going to put these on the one of the two outermost rims there. And you're gonna cover just like this. Okay, if you look in the top corner, I'm gonna show you how to make the little bundles that I have below. I'm gonna take two pieces of ribbon that are 12 inches a piece, dovetail your end, take a piece of the black mesh tubing, put it in the center, take the other half of that chenille stem, wrap it around the middle, and there you have your bow bundle. I used five of these bow bundles on my wreath. What I'm showing you first is when I already have the, the little truck sign attached to it, but I'm gonna show you an alternative in just a minute where we put the wreath underneath and we put the sign directly on top. When it's underneath like this, you can't really see all the details of it being a truck. And to me, I didn't really care for that. I really wanted to see the details and see that it was a truck. So I'm gonna show you in a minute what it looks like if you put that on the top. It's easy to remove, it's attached with, well, you'll see the mechanics in a minute. There's no glue on that sign. Okay, I'm fluffing out my bows here just to make sure that the wreath is good and full. I'm trying to place these ribbon bundles since there are five of them, um, there are five or six of them, I'm trying to put them in a pattern that they're evenly spaced out. You can use whichever ribbons that you like. I just thought that because it was the little black truck sign, it would be cute with the pumpkin in the middle to have a ribbon that coordinated with that. So to see from the back side, I'm using the second to the outermost piece of the frame there to twist on the bundle and then I'm just pressing all those stems inward. Be sure that you fluff them out well. Okay, so then I've decided that in the center I want to add a bigger, more statement piece of a bow. So I'm taking some shoelace bows. I have three of those. They are about a foot and a half long each piece of cording. These are really cool. At first I didn't know exactly what to do with these, but then I thought, you know, these are, they really do give another um, bit of depth and dimension to your projects. So I went ahead and decided to stack these up and see what it would look like. Now the bows that I had already made, the little bow bundles, I'm gonna do this the same way. These are going to be 12 inches each, dovetailed. And there's the spiderweb sparkly orange. Then I'm gonna stack it, put the three bows on top, and then take a piece of that chenille um, cleaner, pipe cleaner thing, and I'm gonna twist it around the middle. And that's gonna go in the front center. If you don't get a good look at that in this video, you will see it in the pictures that, um, that I have. going to secure that on and since we haven't glued these mesh bundles on here you can slide them around until you get the right fit and you get them where you want them to be so this is what it looks like and there's my bow in the bottom now alternatively you can see how I've got the the pipe cleaners on the back with the that's hot glue and a piece of ribbon that's how I attached them on the back you can lay it on the top, line it up. So my big bow in the bottom and my bow at the top, that's how I'm lining it. Then I'm just gonna take these, feed them through the inside. As you can see there how I've attached it. Um, so there we go. I wanna cover up the holes where the hangers were. So I'm gonna use a little hot glue there. Be careful not to burn your fingers. I didn't want to compress it with a clamp because then it would smash down my tubing. So I just lightly laid my scissors on top and now it's all covered up. And so what do you think? Do you like it? I like it much better like this. 
Give me a big thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos. I'd love it for you to comment below and tell me what's your favorite so far. I'll see you again soon. Bye. So here are our supplies, but there's gonna be a couple of other things we're gonna need. We're gonna need some floor wire, some of these woodcuts, either stickers or the trim around the stickers, some berries, you can get those picks from Dollar Tree. I just pulled mine apart. You can get pine cones or pine cone picks, and then some greenery of your choice. I've decided not to use frosted theme this time. We're going to use just evergreen. This is a 10 inch hoop wreath. It's an embroidery wreath. It's the inside ring. Those woodcuts came from the wedding section of Hobby Lobby and I got those 50% off. I am going to use the outside of these stickers as a stencil. So the stickers were gone. I'm going to use the stencils. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue to hold those blocks to the frame because they're quite heavy and I don't want them to, to fall off. In the scheme of things, they're not heavy, but you know, if you want it to stick to the side of something, it's a good idea to use a heavy duty adhesive. So I think the Gorilla Glue should do the trick. Most of these pieces have a flatter surface somewhere, so you just want to try to put the flattest side to the side of your hoop and then have your edges touching. Just using these clamps from the Dollar Tree to hold those in place while they stick. Use just a tad of glue in between and clean up any mess that might spill over. Once they've dried you can remove the clamps and go on to using your stickers or your stencils. All you have to do is cut them to fit the size of the circle that you're using, the round that you're using, and then peel them off. I found that using my fingernail to press on the inside picks those up easier. If I didn't mention before, the stickers actually came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to put the center of my O on first and then try to put that outside back in the original position. The surface of the wood is rough. You can sand it if you would like. If not, when you put these down, be sure you take your fingernail or something and, and kind of press these into place so that they don't come up when you're filling them in. I started off with an acrylic marker and the wood is so porous it just really soaks it up and I wasn't getting the coverage that I wanted. So you can see that here. Maybe a few coats of that might have done the trick, but it seemed kind of like a time waster. And I started on the O and then gave up. So good old chalk paint to the rescue. I'm taking a stiff, flat little brush and just starting to put the paint down on the sticker outlines. You don't want to use too much paint, and since I've never done this method before, I was scared it was going to have a lot of bleed through. So aim for the center of your circle, or I mean your letters there, um, and don't push underneath the edges of the, the paper there. Don't, don't get under the edges of it or it will bleed through. So I tried to stay sort of toward the center and then use some up and down motions to get around the edges. It has seemed to do the trick pretty well. My Y was coming up a little bit, so you'll see me hold that down. So I didn't get as clean of an edge as I wanted to, but I'll show you in a minute how I fix that. I used two coats of paint on this, and then when they were dry, I just carefully peeled them up. The J turned out perfect. I had a little bit of a trouble um, removing the O from the center, and I scratched the paint a little bit. It was dry, but I scratched it. And I had to get my tweezers to pull that off. But I used an emery board later to kind of file that and get that off of there. And then on the Y, my edge on the right side was a little 
crooked or a little sloppy. So in a minute, I'm going to fix that with a chalk pen. The greenery is going to be on one side of the wreath and the joy is on the other side. So we're just gonna find placement for that and then start wiring your layers down. Put this wire on carefully so you don't poke your finger. And just be sure that you, you get it tight enough that it will hold it there, but having just enough slack in it and at least a few of the loops that you can use it as a holder to place your other picks in, if that makes sense. You'll see in a moment. So I'm putting on one more layer. You could just use one if you like. I'm bending up these pine cones so they're not sticking straight out. They kind of bend forward. And I'm slipping those through the wire. That's what I mean by leaving just a little bit of slack in it. And that'll help hold that in place. Now I've chosen four berry picks. You can use whatever you like. And just begin eyeballing where you want those to go and then using a little hot glue to put them in place. You might want to aim for the plastic part of the pick rather than the the little berries themselves because they can melt and then that's just a mess. And I am aware that some of these berries are scratched and have white on the outside. That can be fixed. If it bothers you when you get them, you know, you can fix that with a red marker pretty easily. It doesn't really bother me. Now we're cutting off the wire because we got everything we need over there as far as florals. And I'm going to tidy up the edge of this Y. It is of course not perfect and I'm not aiming for perfection. I just want to make it a little bit neater. I'm going to make a bow to go in the center of our floral side. And I've decided that this Dollar General and this Dollar Tree ribbon are a perfect match. So I am making what I will call the Olivia bow because I learned how to make this on Olivia, Olivia's Romantic Home. You take several loops, I use six inches, fold them over and then take little notches on the sides. I'm going to do that twice, once for the polka dot ribbon and once for the vintage red truck ribbon. I'm just measuring against the little tape measure I have on the edge of my table. Going to make my loops, just counting. You can do a simpler bow if you like for your, you know, your wreath, anything really can go there any type that you like. Or you can go without and put a poinsettia or something in the middle if, if that's what you like. I'm gonna take this zip tie, put it around, make sure that it is in the notches. I'm gonna pinch my wires together to give it some shape and then tighten up that plastic. And once the zip tie is tight, you can start moving around your bow. You want to pull out and at an angle so that it kind of pops it out of alignment and it makes each little piece stand out on its own. Sometimes when I have an idea in my head, it does not come out my mouth the same way, but I think you can see what I'm doing here. So it's a cute little bow. I like it. We're going to trim off the back, and there we are. So you can take a little bit of floor wire and just place it through the back and then twist it around to hold it in place, and I will be trimming that up later. Fluffing my bow again. There's something quite satisfying about fluffing bows to me. 
I like it. I, I, it's one of my favorite part of making a wreath is fooling around with that bow to get it the perfect little shape that I like. And a bow really does give a nice touch. So I've decided that my joy looked a little sad, a little joyless on the side, and I'm going to add some red berries over there to pep it up just a bit. I've just cut another piece of the pick into little strips and you know if you've seen my videos you know I always like to do a dry run is what I call it put it in there see how it's gonna look before I actually glue it down where well, I can't move it so there we go have my little berries on there and I'm going to make a burlap string or burlap cord hanger it's really easy you can see what I did there and then you slip the end through the loop and pull it slide it over you're gonna have to hold that up to see where the weight pulls the the wreath because you're you may have more floral on one side that makes it heavier on one side or the wood pieces may be the heaviest part so you want to make sure that you put it where it's going to hang correctly and if it for some reason slides which jute usually doesn't um, you can put a little piece of hot glue there a little dot and it will hold it in place so I'm going to take a few strips of the truck ribbon and of the polka dot ribbon to just make a couple of little extra bits and pieces to give it a little extra something and I'm gonna make a very simple little you could almost call this a bow I guess I assume that you could call it a bow or you could just call it I don't know a piece a dovetail and end a tail maybe and I'm just going to tie that and then I'm going to tie it around the frame right above the J. And I like that. Of all the inspiration pieces I've seen, I have not seen one quite like this. And I decided to use the word joy because you hear me talk about joy and, and finding what brings you joy and happiness. And it's a word that I really believe in. I think it has a big impact. So I'm just going to put this in place with a dot or two of glue so it doesn't slide. Then you can bend that or have it lay straight depending on what you like since there's wire in it that makes it quite easy to do gonna make a couple more tails and I will be cut off in a minute so you can't see how I complete it but I'm just gonna stick those underneath the pine cones one on the bottom and then there will be one also on the top I don't know what happened to the end of that piece of footage thanks for coming back and for watching my videos I'm having a lot of fun with these and I'm seeing that there is a lot of demand for woodland themed and rustic Christmas, which makes me very happy because it is right up my alley. So I will be doing more of that. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe and stick around be part of our YouTube family. And thank you for those of you who have stuck by me all this time. I'll see you again soon. Gonna start off with this hanging basket that I got from Goodwill. You can do the same thing in a regular tabletop basket if you like. I'm gonna take this first larger pick. I think I got this one at Goodwill. It's a snowy theme, so I think it'll be great for winter time. I'm going to trim it down because the stem's a little bit too long for what we're going to need it for. And I'm going to put it in the center of the basket. That already fills it up pretty well, but we're going to add some more to it. We want this to be very lush and high-end looking. 
So I've got some picks that I've had for years that I've used in my decor. I can't even tell you for sure where those pine picks came from, but I'm sure they were on a clearance sale. These little bits and pieces came from some greenery that I bought a few years ago too, I believe. Some of them I just clipped right off of previous arrangements. I'm gonna take some of these floral picks that are empty now, that just have the stem there. And I'm going to use those as stems for these stemless pieces on the right side. Just going to use some of my pliers to just trim those down. And then for the ones that do not have a hole in the bottom and still have the remnant of a stem, I'm going to use some of this floral tape and wrap this around it to secure it. You can also use a little bit of hot glue and then wrap your floral tape around it to give it some more support. If you don't have floral tape, you can use floral wire. You just begin to twist this around. Floral tape is a waxy tape and it's the stickiness is kind of activated by pulling on it, putting a little bit of pressure on it. So you actually have to pull a little bit on this to get it to wrap around. You're just going to do that several times until you feel like it's secure and then move on to the next piece. These particular pieces I felt were worth the trouble of doing this because there's so much snow on the little picks and they look so realistic to me in my opinion. Now, I live in the south so I'm not around snow that often. But every now and then I get to see snow and I see it on YouTube. And that's what it looks like to me. So now I've got several of those picks ready. I'm going to start to fill in, in the places that need a little something extra. I want this to have a nice full look. So I'm going to fill in where the gaps are. Remember when you're doing a floral arrangement to be sure that you look at all sides of it. Look at it on the top, both sides. You'll see me pick this up and look at it quite a bit to see what might need a little more substance, what little areas need a little more. This arrangement is going to be hung on the wall, but if you wanted to use this on a glass door, you certainly could. Just be sure that whatever you do to the one side that you also apply that to the other side because I'm only decorating one side, making one front pretty side that will show. I want to make a double pick. That's easy enough to do. A little hot glue and because these are prickly and they, they have a tendency to push away from one another, you can use these little clips that came from Dollar Tree or whatever clips you have, even a clothespin if you want, and you can just clip those together until the glue sets up. On these picks, I like the boxwood, but I didn't really care for the, it's, you know, I've had them for so long, it's that old fake pine look, and the greenery just doesn't look that good. However, the boxwood pieces on here look pretty good to me, I think. And they're going to give a little bit of a variety in the foliage instead of just having the evergreens in there that are um, kind of bristly or prickly. This gives it a little bit of variety. So you might consider that if that's a look that you like. If you like a woodland theme, then you might consider doing something like this. Be sure that if you have tags or little extra pieces of wire or tape or things on your stems, be sure to clip those off. Try to remove those because you're gonna, it's gonna be more difficult to achieve a high-end look if you have a bunch of extra stuff that's distracting you from the overall look and the cohesiveness in your project. So just go ahead and get rid of the stuff that's not necessary. It just takes a couple more minutes and it's worth it. Just going to continue to find the pieces that we need. So when you use your floral picks, be sure that you 
are keeping your the stems for other projects because they can be used for quite a few things actually. So I'm filling in on the right side, I'm filling in on the left side. I'm going to try to make it look as balanced as possible. What do you think so far? I think it looks nice. This is just a different type of pick that looks like it looks like it's brown and I'm going to show you how you can glue that on. Just put a little hot glue there and hold that down for a moment and then you can put a clip on there and set it aside. And when the glue is cool and it is set up then you could go ahead and use that pick. But you don't have to stop. You know, if if you I don't like to stop in the middle of my projects. I like to continue to go, if I'm working on one thing, let the glue dry on something else, let the paint dry on something else and move on to the next step. That's how I like to do it. So you see, you see how fake and ratty those pieces look? We don't want that in our, in our basket. The pieces that I'm cutting off, I throw those down in a box or a bag and all the little pieces that I know I don't use, I give to um, for donation like to Goodwill or something like that. I'll put leftover pieces of ribbons, um, things that I don't use, extra bits and pieces of stuff that I know that I won't be using in my decor because really honestly with crafting you can get way too much. So if I know I'm not going to use it, maybe it's not a color that I like, and I'm not going to continue it on another project, throw it all in a box or a bag with a little zipper on the top and then donate it. Because I can't tell you how many times I myself have gone in to Goodwill and found bags of ribbon and little ornaments or buttons or little sewing pieces, foliage, greenery, you name it, all in one bag, which is perfect. And I pick it up and bring it home and use it. So I think that one person's trash is another person's treasure. And maybe somebody else is looking for that exact piece of ribbon that I will donate. And that'll be great. If it brings them some joy, that's wonderful. I'm having a bit of an allergy situation right now. So I'm sniffling a little bit. And I'm not always aware when I do it. So I do apologize for that. Now I've got extra pine picks that came from other things and I'm just going to put more in there. I like the, the wood look of the basket and the dark color from the pine cones. It looks really good together. Now you could leave it like this if you wanted to, but for me, I think I want to add a little bit something extra on here. And so I'm going to add a little bit of this ribbon and this came from the Dollar Tree. It's like a burlap with polka dots. And it came out of the, it wasn't in the spring section, maybe the gardening section. Okay, so there's no need to go all the way around the basket. Like I said, I'm not going to be using the other side. You see that it's flat on that side, pretty much. I'm just going to be gluing this down. Going to use my spatula to just press that down into that. I don't know if you would call that wicker or grapevine, whatever that is, just pressing it in there so that it gets a good grip with that ribbon. And then I'm going to put those clips that came from the laundry section in Dollar Tree on there to hold that in place. Once it is cool and set up, we can remove the clips and then continue on the other side because now we want to put a bow on it. Just a little bow and this bow is probably the easiest bow I have ever made so yeah. You're going to cut a loop of ribbon. This is about seven inches long. Fold it over on itself overlapping about a half of an inch. Going to put a little 
hot glue on there and then press it down so you got your loop there center that seam in the back and then you're just going to walk your fingers toward each other in the center in the front and there you have it a little piece of jute cord or twist tie or whatever that you have and just secure it in the center I'm just folding it over to make sure that both sides are the same size I'm going to tie it in a double knot trim off the extra and then we have our little bow and the next step will be to make the tails you could leave it like that or you could put tails on like I'm gonna do now these tails are very very simple and since I only had a tiny bit of ribbon left I decided to go ahead and just do it this way so you're just gonna overlap it like that in the center under the bow I'm dovetailing my ear my little tails my ears really I'm not dovetailing my ears <laughs> Ugh. time for more coffee guys okay so you can put them at an angle or straight out on the sides they're gonna overlap a little bit of the seam will be showing once you glue it down but you don't have to worry about that because there's going to be an embellishment in the center so see this is really easy you can use scraps for this you've got a little bit of that extra ribbon that you love but you don't have enough to make a nice beautiful bow you can just make a little one you can maybe even use two different colors of ribbon or prints okay so I'm gonna take one of these bells. These again came from Dirt Cheap. I got them for like 10 cents and I got, oh gosh, probably five packs with four on each pack. They look like aged little bells. I'm gonna use some hot glue there. And I am using the Gorilla Glue Sticks right now. I have some of the cheaper ones too, but I, we get a lot of wind where I live, so if I do decide to put this on an exterior wall, I don't want anything to fall apart. So there it is with its bell. Now be sure that you take all the little spider webs from the, the glue stick away. Just kind of clean it up, brush it off a little bit, and there you have it. That was so easy. I probably paid less than $1.70 for that basket. It was empty when I got it. And then the clips, the little pieces of stuff, that stuff I already had. The ribbon I already had on hand, but it was a dollar at Dollar Tree and about 10 cents for the bells, which would be even less per bell. So I got a really, really cheap decoration here for winter. You could definitely use this at Christmas and it would certainly last you all the way through the end of winter and the end of the year beginning into spring what do you think what would you do differently you know you could do this with florals if you wanted to add some florals in there or mainly florals if you wanted I just really love that woodland warm cozy feel this year I think it's important when we're spending so much time indoors and at home that we fill our home with things that are inviting and cozy and that bring us joy and this definitely brings me joy and I hope it does for you too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye! These are a bunch of items that we might be using. So you can use any type of ornaments from the Dollar Tree or from Walmart. They have some little minis here. Gonna use possibly this coaster just an idea of a sign these came from Dollar Tree in the floral section I believe we have an assortment of ribbons that we could use these are wired ribbons they came from Dollar General and Dollar Tree and then here is my thrifted stocking which came from Hobby Lobby it originally came from Hobby Lobby but I got it at Goodwill this is an old pillow that I've used for stuffing on a couple of projects and I'm going to use it for this.
take the tag off of your stocking if it is new if it is not then you are good to go this stocking has fur trim and it is so cute I'm just gonna fluff it up a little bit then we gotta stuff this stocking so we're gonna take the inside of the pillow tear it apart pull it apart kind of fluff it up a little bit and then we're gonna begin fluffing up this stocking because we want it to look full nobody wants a empty empty stocking at Christmas right so we're gonna fluff it up you can use if you have paper towels you could use that you could use Walmart or Dollar Tree bags you could use an old newspaper just crumple it up and stuff it down in the stocking be sure that you get the toe and then work your way up the leg of the stocking and once I get it all fluffed up I want to make sure that it's kind of even and there's no no lumpiness so I'm just kind of patting it down and getting it straight this is a foam block that I'm just gonna stuff in the top to make sure that it fits because we're gonna do an arrangement with this this is a little truck with a Christmas tree in it this is an ornament pack that came from Dollar Tree and then these are some acrylic markers that I got off of Amazon I'll try to get that link for you and put that in the description box you can color your truck whatever color you like uh, like a dark green would be really pretty I've seen black trucks you could use a blue heck you could use white or pink or whatever color matches your stocking but it's Christmas and I want to use the red on this truck I'm just gonna fill this in of course if you don't have acrylic markers you can use chalk paint and a brush you know kind of a small brush that's easy control or you could use acrylic paints on here if you wanted to do that you could you could probably do watercolors too but you wouldn't have the coverage that you get with a paint a paint marker I got two packs they came as one set it's the bullet tip which I'm using now for these bigger areas and then there are some fine tip uh, markers as well when you get these you have to shake them up and then press them down until the paint comes down into the tip of the marker but then you're good to go every now and then they'll get a little bit streaky and all you got to do is just press them down or draw on the paper which you saw me do on the side there and it'll get the flow going again but I'm happy with them they didn't cost a lot of money so that's always a good thing because you know I'm I'm frugal I'm also going to use the black here to line out the bed of the truck that rail there but you could use a dark brown if you wanted that would be good I think that would work okay then I'm gonna take the green and I'm gonna start coloring in that tree we're gonna give it some shading or we're gonna give it some snow in just a moment and it's really gonna make a difference in this little ornament it's gonna kind of bring it to life I decided to leave this part in because I know a lot of people like to see painting and and drawing they like to watch so okay here we go you're gonna take your white and just go over it with little dots and little streaks on the high points where you would normally have snow collect if you live in the south you may have no no clue whatsoever but I think the high areas are where you're gonna see this I'm using my white fine tip marker for this okay so my tree is going to dry and I'm going to take this floral pick it's one that I had removed the um, floral pieces from already and I started off using one of those little twine or whatever balls but 
I do take those off, so you won't see me use those again. But these are some white ornaments that came out of the multi-packs of ornaments from the Dollar Tree last year, and they do have them this year. They look like little snowballs, so I thought they would be good in this, in this rustic arrangement. Just going to take a few. And my block is used to just hold those in place until my glue dries. Then you can take them up and put them aside because they'll be cut off in a moment. I took a snowy floral pick, and I believe this is one that I got on clearance last year at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It's just a pine pick. And where I live, we do have pine trees. And I live in southern Alabama, so obviously we don't have the snow, but would you believe it? A couple of years ago, we had snow two years in a row. I was so shocked. It was a fluke, I know, but, you know, it was a blessing to us because it was nice to see it. It's rare for my kids to get to play in snow, so it was really great. So I've cut these off of the pick, and I'm just using those to stick here and there in my floral foam. And now I've got to have some way to stick my ornament in there, so I'm just taking another stem that I had left and some hot glue gluing that down on the back side of that truck and letting it sit up while I continue to work on my floral arrangement um I think these were some picks that I got on clearance last year from Hobby Lobby they are completely flocked and I, I really like these pieces I didn't get very many of them though so I'm going to use them kind of sparingly. Now I know that the smallest part of this is going to be the, the block there that's going to go on the inside of the arrangement. So I want my arrangement to sort of fan out. So that's why you see me going kind of wide and short on the sides. Now I'm going to show you how to take a pine cone and wire it. You just cut a length of floral wire find a bottom section that has a gap in it and you just wrap it around there. That's all you got to do and then twist it closed. I'm going to borrow another pick from another floral pick and then I'm just going to wrap that wire around the pick and now I have something sturdy to stick this down into that, that block. If it's still a little bit too loose for your liking, put a dot of hot glue on there and it'll stay where you want it to stay. So I'm going to cut this pick a little bit shorter and put it a little more towards the front and a little bit lower down. I have almost a triangle formation with that and also with those little snowballs. And now these beautiful picks, I definitely should have got more of because I cannot find them now. These are like, I think they're willow picks and they came from the Dollar Tree. These things really give a very nice woodland look to your projects. They are really nice. Be sure that you're also decorating some on the back side. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to have a little something back there to fill it out. And feel free to bend some of your picks. Do you see how this is almost like it's fanned out on the top? And then there is my little tree. I'm gonna put him in there. And see how I like him placed. Do I want to put him behind the sticks or in front of them? And I think it looks better kind of taking center stage there. So I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna place it back down on the inside. Now I will tell you, once I get it put back up, I take right there above the rim, I take some of that fake snow cloth and I put it down in there to cover it up and, and make it look like it's sitting in the snow. I just don't have footage of that. Go back through, add picks, add florals, whatever you want in there to just fill it out and give it the look that you like. And I really love this. This is pretty. This is a really simple arrangement. This would make a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful piece of decor. 
and I just, I love it. It was simple. It didn't take me long to make, and I hope that you do this. Dollar Tree's got some great stockings right now. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. We're going to start off with glue stick, of course. Going to take some picks of your choice. I just have some eucalyptus here. That from, came from the thrift store. I've got some roses and this heart pick that came from Dollar Tree. Here are some heart doilies from Dollar Tree in the Valentine section. This bag is a wedding bag, I believe, and it just came from the regular bag section in Dollar Tree. And this is a sign, Valentine sign, which looks cute enough as its own, you know, on its own. But we're going to fix it up, give you some options. So first off, we're going to choose which side of the bag that we want, and it's usually easier to do the side. In my opinion, it is flat and doesn't have the bend in it. So I'm just trying to take the bag apart a little bit. This doesn't matter if it tears. I just want to have a little bit easier access to cut a bigger opening. So I'm going to lay this out flat and trim out the section that I want to use. If you want to leave the sides on there to carry it all the way across, you can since there's a print on it, but I didn't want to do it that way. I've got another plan for that. So then you decide where you want to put your doilies, and I am just going to put mine kind of staggered down the front of this sign. Well, it's actually the back of the sign, and I think I will put my bag picture right there in the center or close to the center okay more problems with the glue stick it's coming out really goopy I don't know what's going on but that's okay it, it's easy to wash off so I'll just use my hands where I need to to be a messy crafter now rather than going all over the board I just want to make sure that I have enough to stick down and then I want to Put it down to hold it and then go around the edges. Just lift up where it's not stuck down and just add your glue around those edges. That way you don't have a big mess on the outside. There we go. And then we're gonna just do this down the front. Be sure that you make sure that your layers are thin, that you just have one layer and you're not picking up two. You don't want anything falling apart later. I have mine arranged so that they hang over the sides and I'll be removing that excess. I guess you could leave it if you wanted to, but these doilies are a little on the fragile side and they would probably pick and tear, snag on things, so probably best just to trim it off. So I have my trusty sanding block that was sent to me by one of my viewers. And I am going to just gently trim this off. I sped it up a little bit. Okay. If you have any pieces sticking up, just press them gently back down. Because you still have that glue on there and it's still a little bit damp. Find the placement of your bag. Go ahead and add your glue all over the back of your bag. All the way down, especially to the corners and edges. and then place that down. When I placed mine down, I did not place it on there exactly centered. That's okay, that won't be an issue because I'm going to use a border around there. So it'll be all right. Don't discourage if you make little boo-boos along the way. With crafting, you can usually fix anything. And sometimes they end up being the happiest of mistakes. All right, I've got some rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use my pliers to cut it because it's very thick. And I'm gonna make a border around here. This is gonna give it some dimension. It's gonna look 3D and it's going to act as a frame. So to keep it from unraveling, I've just put a little glue on the edge and then twisted it to make those strands stay together. 
if it's crooked, just go ahead and make your straight line. The thickness of this rope will allow you to overlap slightly onto that picture to give you a nice even edge if you need to do that. Be sure you put glue in that corner and hold that down for a minute so that it doesn't come loose and it will keep its shape for you. You don't want to pull, you just want to guide it and lay it down. Don't pull it. And you're just going to continue that all the way around. I think this gives it a very nice rustic look and then the wood grain of the bag also does the same. Plus you have the romance of the little lacy doilies in the background. I just think it's really pretty and fitting for our farmhouse rustic decor. Just removing the spider webs from the glue. And then I'm using my little bull nose pliers here to cut it and then trim it with the scissors. Add a little glue there, twist it and push it down and keep it from frying. Now I'm just going to take this oak marker, this is a furniture marker, and just dot in the white that's under there because it was really standing out to me. Now it just looks like the background. We're going to make a little pocket on the bottom. It's only stuck on the sides, so you're going to wrap it around the back and then place it on the sides. Just a little line of glue there. So you have an open top and an open bottom. And I'm going to make a little bouquet to put on the bottom and it'll be removable. So I'm going to cut off a few of these heart picks and some of the roses. These are such a pretty color. They're a very pale peachy pink, I think. Really good quality for Dollar Tree. I don't care for the foliage that's on there, but you know, for what we pay at Dollar Tree, you really can't complain. We're going to hide most of that greenery anyway. So now just start making your little bouquet in your hand just like you would a regular bouquet. I'm going to tuck in my greenery. Greenery. I'm, <laughs> the word is greenery. Yeah. I'm going to put the green stuff amongst the staggered roses. we got different heights there just because I put them in my hand that way. And then you can put your pick in at this point or you can wait. I'm going to take a little bit of green Chanel stem, wrap that around the bottom, and then I'm going to take a little bit of the burlap ribbon, there it is, and wrap that around. So when it's removed, if you decide you want to remove it, it looks nice, finished, and neat. Plus, if you use the burlap here, it helps give it a little grip on the other piece of burlap ribbon, which, by the way, those pieces came off of a roll from Dollar Tree. You can decide which side you want to put your arrangement on. Since I usually go to the left side, I decided to put it on the right side this time. And see, it holds it nicely. No problem. You have the freedom to move it around. It's not going to fall out. Now we're going to make a bow. These Strips of ribbon are about two inches shorter than the one before it. So this is going to be a stacked bow. I'm going to put the largest layer on the bottom, then the next layer on top of that, and the next layer on top of that. Stack them. We're going to make a little loop to go in the center. So we're just going to take a short section, make a little loop. Watch your fingers. Glue goes right through this and it is hot. Thus the name hot glue. Okay, so we're gonna put that right in the center. Take a piece of jute cord or whatever you have because you won't be able to see it. Twist it onto the back, pinch it in the center and give it a good couple of knots gonna hold it in place. So I'm folding it there just to make sure before I secure it down that my sides are equal. That's all I was doing with that. So now I'm just playing around with the bow and the wire in here helps it hold its shape. So that's that's really great with this wire. I mean with this ribbon rather. 
Looks like somebody needs more coffee this morning. Can't speak. All right, so we're gonna make the tails now by just cutting another length. That's about a 10 inch strip of ribbon. Pinching it in the middle, folding it down. I'm going to dovetail it. Glue it on the back in the center of that bow. Right where you tied it. Hold it for a minute or two. I edited that out. Be sure that you hold it in place, let the glue get cool, and then it'll stick. All right, so here I go with a, a heart, and I'm going to place this down in the little bouquet bundle. You can use one of these, you can use two of these, you can put them wherever you want. After Valentine's, you can easily remove those picks out of there. They're not glued in. I'm going to take one of these rosebuds and a little piece of this eucalyptus and add it right to the top. A little bit of hot glue will hold it to the back of that bow nicely. Flip it over. You're going to make a little jute hanger. This is the way I do most of them. And I did not protect my fingers. I should have, so you protect yours. So now we have our little hanger, and it'll be underneath where that is, where that flower is. What do you think? I think it's very pretty, and I'm liking the peachy colors for Valentine's Day, I think, a little bit better than the, I don't really care for the fuchsia and the really bright stuff, so you'll probably see a little bit of pink in what we're doing here on my channel. Thanks to all my subscribers. We are at 403 subscribers. Be sure you share and like this video. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Project number one, rustic wall decor. You can also use this to hang on your door. So this is a potato bag that my husband brought to me that he got when he went to buy seed potatoes for our garden. So he brought this home, thought I might could do something with it, and of course I kept it. These are some cotton stems, and I also have some thrifted flowers, and this, I think this is like a wooden, really lightweight uh, big plate or platter. I'm going to spray that W in the middle with some satin paint. Of course, I didn't have to do that. You'll see why shortly. Also, you can use these little picks if you would like instead of using the big ones, and you can see they're very similar. I think you can get some cotton picks also at the Dollar Tree if you want to look for those. So just like with any other floral, if you want to be sure that you fluff it out, bend it back and forth, move it around. Nothing grows straight up and bunched together, I don't think, but maybe grapes. Okay, so I'm just trying to see how I want to place this. I'm going to go inside the edge. It's only stitched on the bottom and on one side, and I'm just going to clip it and pull that thread, and it's going to open the whole thing. I think that dog food bags, most of them have the same type of a, of a seam. You just clip one section, and it pulls right out. So I'm trying to decide which piece I want to go along here and trim it up, and I learned a little trick, and this is something that I got from Crafting Cousins. To get a straight line in your burlap, pick a piece and just pull it, and it will make you a nice straight line. Look at that. Now I have a guide to cut all the way down. So thanks for that tip, girls. Just going to go right along there. And you can pretty much use the same process here on this top. I want to make this kind of even. It doesn't really matter in the end, but I felt like I needed to clean it up a bit. Makes it easier to handle. So I'm just getting a straight line there also. And then trimming up where it's a little bit longer on the top. If you don't have a potato bag, you can use 
an onion bag, you can use, um, you could probably use a pillowcase if you had one, or you can just use a piece of burlap that's not in a bag. But I like the, the print on this, so I wanted to be sure to use it. And it's perfect for this time of year when everybody's using patriotic themes on their porches and in their house. I think this is a really good um, use for summer decor. So this is not metal, as I've said. It's some type of wood or something. I'm just going to hot glue right to the back, and it will stay perfectly fine here. Just going to fold it over, and I know you can't see the bottom. I apologize, but it's the same process as I'm doing on the sides. Just fold it up and glue it down. Fold it over and glue it down. Now, I'm not going all the way up because I'm going to do a little something different with the top. So I'm just going to go up maybe a few inches from the top is where I'll stop. Don't worry about the mess, we'll fix that later. Okay, so this is how much I have on here. And now you can see why it didn't matter that that W was on there, because you can't see it now at this point anyway. So now I'm gonna fold this over and I'm going to press it down and then get in between the layers also so it will stay flat. And I've tried to make a point to use quite a bit of glue to hold this down because I will be stuffing it and putting some pressure on it. I don't want it to fall apart. And I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks. But you use whatever you have. If you're putting it outside, just be aware that hot glue will release sometimes in a lot of sunlight and heat. So just keep that in mind. You might want to keep it inside. Now just to keep that folded, I put a little extra glue underneath. Now I'm going to take the other half of the bag and use that for my stuffing. I have old pillow stuffing here. You just rip apart those old pillows that are beat to death. I'm just folding it up in no particular way, making a little pouch and stuffing it on the inside. Just stuffing my strings down and all the little cotton fluff so that it's on the inside. So see there? It gives it a little bit of fluffiness to appear that it is full of something. We want it to appear that it is full of cotton and florals. These came on a long stem, so they very easily go down in here. Oh, I might add, these particular cotton stems came from Amazon. My husband ordered them uh, as well as a hand sander for me, so does he know me or what? That was my Mother's Day gift. Okay, so I'm going to take these little flowers. They look like, almost look like African violets to me, except they're red and white. Do they come in any other color besides violet? Let me know in the comments below, because I'm not sure, but that's what they look like to me. And then I'm just going to put the white in the middle, because I only have one of those. They all tuck pretty nicely into the bag that is underneath, so I didn't use any foil foam or anything like that to hold it in. They, they tuck nicely into there. And I got the top folded over and tight enough that it kind of holds it in place. So again, I'm just fluffing out the pieces that I mashed up. Now look what I'm going to do with all of the pieces. Talking about using every bit of your items in a project. Look at this. This is the scraps that I pulled out when I was making my edges. And I'm just going to tie a little knot there in the middle. And then you can cut free all the little loops. See how there's some loops in there? Those can be cut. Can, uh, trim those up if you want to or you could leave them hanging at different lengths. I kind of like the choppy rustic look of this. And of course you know me, I've got to fluff it and put it in a thousand places till I see what looks right to me. So then I decided I had a little bit left from the bottom of the bag because all we use so far, right, is the front and the back. Now I've got the bottom section here. I'm going to tear some of that off. It's got some of that red from the word in it. And I'm going to tie a simple bow in it. If I can get it to behave itself. It took a minute there. Okay, there we go. So pull that out. I'm going to fluff out that bow. And then I think I like it just like that. Look at that little messy bow. Isn't that perfect? And I just used my scraps for that. Then I'm just going to add that bow to the top of the knotted section and clamp it down so it has a nice good hold. 
Now I'm going to take a few of those single picks and just place those around where it looks like they need to be. A little bit of hot glue to stick it down. And what's great about this particular, I guess, piece of decor here is that it can be changed out. Since we didn't glue anything but a couple of little pieces down, maybe that one or two pieces of cotton stems, you can use this for something else. Put a different arrangement in it. So these, all these little picks here are on pieces of wire. So you can cut them off and some of them are just held on there by the uh, tape, like a floral tape. You can just pull them straight out and then you can use them in other sections. So don't be afraid to kind of manipulate the flowers and stuff and um, yeah, get them where you like them. Get them to where it feels right. And you know, with rustic, I want it to look like it's more natural, a more of a natural look. And I think that rustic and cottage core fit right into that, that natural, rugged, rustic kind of pretty look. Now I decided that it needed some more greenery in it and some more height. So I'm just taking some more of these thrifted pieces that look like, pretty much just look like weeds. They got some type of a berry in them. I'm going to add those down in there. And I got to tell you guys, this reminds me of Louisiana. I am in Alabama now, so I'm an Alabama girl. But most of my life was spent in Louisiana and in Mississippi. And we had lots of cotton fields all around and wildflowers. And this is just... This makes my heart happy. Just like my magnolia wreath that I did, I can look at this and I have so many warm memories and I love it. Okay, so now we're going to make a hanger. And I'm just going to turn this over and it, nothing's falling out. You can see nothing's falling out. Just be gentle. And I'm going to make a hanger for the back. So I'm just using a scrap piece that I got off of some other project that I did. I have a bucket that I keep my little scraps in that are big enough to use for you know, multi-purpose. So I'm just making the simple loop for the back and then just putting some hot glue and a piece of paper over that. You can pull your tags off, you can paint the back if it bothers you. You can use some felt or some paper on the back to cover it all up if you want to do that. I'm going to show this to you on my door, but this is actually going to be in the inside of my house. So no one is going to see the back of this piece. Here it is hanging on the door, so if you wanted to have it outside, this is how it would look. I love how it looks with the natural wood on our cabin house. Very pretty. Is this something that you would try? I know I had comments from my Magnolia and my um, summertime, another summertime video that a lot of people are from the south so I have a lot of southern folk in my subscriber family. Is this something that you would try? Be sure you guys follow me on my social media on Pinterest and on Instagram. Project number two is a strainer planter. I got this design from a Louisiana girl. Her name is Julie from Julie's Designs and Signs or Signs and Designs. I'll put her link below because I'm giving her all credit for this idea. I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, I already have the pieces to do this at my house. So everything you see is thrifted except for the paint, which is the, um, it's an antique wax. Even my DeWalt drill is thrifted, y'all. Seriously, I paid $5 for the DeWalt drill. Yeah, and two chargers, and it works. It's perfect. Okay, so. This is so easy. Don't be intimidated by power tools, ladies. If, you, if you've never used a power tool, don't be intimidated. This is so easy. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of that antique wax in the bowl that I always use for my antiques wax, as you can see there, and just a little bit of water. And I'm going to make a bit of a wash for this. So I'm going to get it. It's going to be kind of runny and messy. I'm going to use this chip book brush. And I tap a little bit off so I don't go completely nuts with it. And then it's just going to run everywhere. You see it on the table there? We don't care. I don't want it to be completely dark. I want this to just look aged. And I want it to look, you know, a little bit darker. A little bit of a richer color for my rustic 
cottagey farmhouse. I don't even know what my style is anymore. All I do know for sure, for certain, is that I love warm, earthy tones and I love a comfortable house. So how's that? Now I'm gonna do all three of these the same way. I'm even using my little, do you see that's a chopping mat that I used to paint on? And you can get those at Dollar Tree and they're in a two pack. So be sure you go pick one of those up. And then they're easy to, to wash off in the sink. And uh, glue pretty much peels off of them too. That is so easy. And it really doesn't take long when you do it this way for the stain to dry. So pretty much we made a, a stain. All right, so this is a strainer of sorts, and you see it's kind of bent and not exactly flat on the bottom. If yours is this way, just go ahead and press that down. This is metal and it's kind of easy to maneuver. So just press your bottom a little bit flatter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, rustic, it's not, we're not trying to achieve perfection here. We just want it to look like it's aged and look like it's been used before. There I go with my whole arm in there again. Okay, in the bottom of this, there are six little marks that do not have holes. This makes it so simple for me to go in and figure out where I'm going to put my legs. So I'm just going to use my paint marker that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love for so many reasons. I'm going to mark these. Take my drill. Now the drill bit is the same size as my screw, and that's important to know because you're going to put a screw through the hole you want it to fit. So just be sure that you know what screws you're using so you can do that. Also drilling down and then using reverse to drill back out of the hole. Okay, these are dry. Now I'm just going to drill into here. Pre-drilling these ho holes will make it easier for the screws to go in. And it, you have to hold this in such an awkward way, or at least I haven't figured out an easier way to do it. So you want to give yourself a break. I'm fairly new to power tools, uh, as you could probably see here. So I'm just looking for the hole, and there it is. You can see the dark mark where I had it, and I'm just starting the screw off just a little bit. I'm gonna put that little leg on there and then screw it down. See there? Look at that! So you know where I'm going with this? Okay, now I'm tightening them up to make sure that they stay. You're also gonna wanna use something to seal that if you're gonna have it, you know, on an area where it's not under a covered porch and I have a covered porch so I'm not gonna have to worry about it but I still did use a sealer on the legs and around the screw holes and it's a planter Julie you're a genius I know you probably won't see my videos because you have a really big channel but you are so awesome I love this idea and I plan on making more I see these things at Goodwill all the time even the little legs came from Goodwill these fern picks they came from Goodwill. These things look so real. So what do you think about these projects? And please tell me you're gonna try at least one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Project number one, I'm going to need a basket. It is one of two that I have that I thrifted and I'm going to use magnolias. They're one of my favorite flowers and I have two of these trees in my yard. These are some foes that I got from Goodwill. I also have some burlap strips, two different thicknesses, and two different colors. One's a little more sheer than the other. And then I just have some tool that is white. I'm gonna be using some floral wire you could also use uh, the little pipe cleaners or Chanel stands if you would like. But first, I'm going to get the dust off of these flowers. Just using a little paintbrush to do that. I'm going to fix the florals on their picks and stems. Just kind of twisting those leaves around a bit. And I'm going to start laying them out how I would like for them to show up. This is a good arrangement to do if you have a glass door that you want to put it on because you can see the other side is going to just be the basket and you won't have a mess back there like you do with some wreaths and floral arrangements that you might want to put up. I'm just going to add these picks where I feel like 
they look right. I move my things around quite a bit. And remember, if you have florals that are fake or silk, you can always bend the wires to have them in the direction that you would like for them to face. I'm going to use some of this floral wire to make little picks and ties. I'm just going to fold it over like a hairpin, push it through the, that open mesh in the back, and then twist it, and it'll hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing with the greenery. You can stack them together and wrap them around. And this is what it's going to look like. You can always go back in with some hot glue and a little spare greenery and put that around wherever you would like if you see spots that need a little more filling. But I think this looks pretty good. Everything seems to be happy where it's at. I'm just going to pull a few things out. And now we're going to work on our bow. I am going to use 16 inches of this open mesh and then the one that's a little bit more closely woven I'm going to do the same thing here cut that off and then I'm just going to put about the same amount of the tool that's hard to see against this background. Now this bow is going to be super easy. Protect your fingers. I didn't do that here, but I was very careful how I was holding it. You're going to fold those over on themselves right there on the edges and press it down. Put it aside so it can cool. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to wrap that one over a little bit more so it makes the loop a little smaller. So see there, you have a little extra in the back. It's a little shorter on the second layer and then I'm just folding this last one up. No rhyme or reason to that. Now I'm going to press this bow, pinch it, and then press it together in the middle. I'm going to take some jute cord and I'm just going to tie that in a couple of knots to hold that bow together. You can use a twist tie for this if you want or you can use zip ties floral wire, whatever you have. I'm trying to go through some of the supplies that I have now. And jute is what I happen to have a little extra of. So these are just pretty much scraps that I have left. And I'm going to trim these down to make the tails. I'm using 12 inches of each of these. I'm gonna cut those after I stack them right down the middle. And then I'm going to trim off the stitched area because I want to have a rough edge on this. I'm just going to trim it off and I'm going to set it aside because it will be used in another project. Same thing on this one. And then you can just start pulling the loose threads off to give it a little frayed edge on both sides. Now going to the darker ribbon, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut it and then just start pulling some of the edges loose from that. You see they come off very easily. Now I'm going to stack them with the darker color in the back and the lighter color on top just like I did with the bow. can go trim up anything that's sticking out or that doesn't look right. And I'm going to put these together. So there's a little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue there, and we have the tails for the bow. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to put some glue on the top of that and place the bow that we've already made right in the center. fluff the bow just a little bit, get an idea of what it's going to look like when we're getting ready to use it, and give that glue some time to dry. And this is what our bow is going to look like. So we have to have a way to attach it, and I'm going to do the same thing with the wire that I did before. I'm just going to make a loop like a hairpin, stick it through there, and then I'm going to put it right above 
where I already have a hanger. Once it's secured, I'm going to use a couple of dots of glue to give my ribbon tails a little bit of movement. Just going to put a dot of glue there because I'll be repurposing this um, form at another time. Just a couple of little dots of glue to hold it in place. And then you can also do the same thing on the other side and put it in your floral section if you'd like. Now I'm going to just make the extra little tail part with the tool, tuck it underneath, and then there you go. So this is project one, and this is a wreath for my door. This is my front door, and it is all glass. And here's my beautiful magnolia arrangement. Project number two. I'm going to be using some of these decorative balls. These are um, different types of almost, I want to say wooden and also vine. I'm going to use a five inch wreath and one of the bigger um, orbs here. It has wire on the inside, like a wire frame or a metal frame. I'm going to do what we, what's going to be my bottom right now is what I'm attaching to it. This is like my base. And I'm going to attach this in four sections and leave a little bit of my pipe cleaners there. Leave a little bit of length, like an inch probably, on each section. And I'm just going to go into quarters and do one on each quarter. All you have to do is kind of bend a little loop to make it thread through easier. Then I'm going to do the same thing right in the center of, of that section, right on the bottom. Next, I'm going to use some jute cord. I've got about 16 inches, but you can vary the lengths. And you're going to tie off each of these orbs. Do a couple of knots so that it is nice and secure, and be sure that you tie it on a piece that is actually attached and not loose, because sometimes they will be loose. Now, I flip this over, and on the center top, what's going to be our top, I have just fed a little bit of that jute through there. And I'm going to do a little knot so that I have a hanger right there on the top. So there you go. This is going to hang. Now we're going to flip it back over to the bottom. I'm going to undo the twist tie just a tad and start adding the ropes with the smaller orbs on it. I'm going to twist that in and then I'm going to trim off the little extra because I don't need the extra anymore. Do the same thing with each of the other sections. You want to vary your length, but since we're not cutting it or tying it down, twisting it up in this will allow you to, to look at it and make adjustments. Make it higher, make it lower, however you want to do these, because you do want these to be hanging at different levels. And this way you can pull that jute back and forth through the loops that you have in that chenille stem. So next I'm going to start pulling off some greenery that I have. Just pulling off all these little segments. These are all thrifted. Every bit of this is thrifted, except for the jute. And I'm just going to start adding these in where that big orb meets the little wreath that's underneath it. So there's a little, little space there and I'm going to put these pieces. I don't know what kind of greenery this is, but I like it very airy and I'm just going to do that all the way around then I'm going to add some to the top of each one of the smaller orbs I'm going to add two one on either side of each of the smaller orbs it's very easy to do a little hot glue will hold it in there you can use a different type of adhesive if you are going to have this outside in a windy place um, you know, however you want to do it. Then I'm going to take little strips of jute and I'm going to tie bows in the top over the knot on each one of these. That's going to give it a little added security because it is right underneath the knot. Sorry, I'm out of the out of your sight right there for a moment. And then I'm going to take three strips of 10 inches and I'm going to tie 
a couple of little stacked bows in the center. I just want to remind you of the rules you can find in the first card of this video and in the description box, but I also want to let you know that it is a hop, so that means you have to watch each of all the eight videos, and in the description boxes of each video, there's going to be a link that will send you to the next video. You need to leave a comment on each one that you watch, each of the eight, and this is going to give you a chance to win $80. Here you follow all of those rules, and good luck. Now, after the bows are tied, I'm just going to go up and add four or five pieces of that same greenery to the top. Here it is completed. A little piece of porch decor. I think it's gorgeous. What do you think? Summer is, when I think of summer, I think of sitting on the porch with a glass of iced tea. Oh yeah, and all the good stuff. Now here's the last little project, and this is a little bonus project really, very simple. I'm just using some cans in two different sizes that some greens and some black eyed peas came in because I live in the south. Just going to use some extra scraps and bits that I had left. I pulled off the edges to make them rough. I'm gonna hot glue them down the seam there. I'm gonna use the other one to do the other can. I'm just gonna trim it down, take the edges off, fray it out a bit, and add it to the larger can. These cans could be used for artificial um, candles. It could be like the flameless candles, or you could use greenery you could put flowers in them you could put shells in them whatever you want to do you can make this your own it's what my channel is all about just glue that down and remember those scraps trim that i had well, there we go i'm going to use one here i'm going to take some of that greenery it's a little bit different. The color is a little bit different on these. This might actually be eucalyptus. Just going to adjust it a bit. Then I'm going to tie it off. There you go. That one's done. Now I have this from a project that I did earlier. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, but it is burlap. I'm going to take a little finger full of that same greenery. Put it down, tie it nicely, and I'm going to trim that off so we don't need anything to help to catch the wind and take it off the porch. And this is what they're going to look like. Nice. If you want to add greenery like I did, this is what you do. I'm keeping it simple with some neutral colors here but you can do whatever you would like for yours. I'm not even using any foam. I'm just using what I have, making this super simple for this last project. Cutting these in different lengths, not even cutting the flowers. I'm just folding them over and poking them down in there, adding some more, added some more pieces. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye. Most of these supplies came from the Dollar Tree. We're going to take a triangle shadow box and several of these wooden ornaments. They come in packs of multiples. And then we're going to take the peel and stick vinyl. This came from Dirt Cheap, but it orig originally came from Target. It's like a peel and stick paper. You can use contact paper. You can glue down some construction paper or scrapbook paper, whatever you choose to use. But I wanted white in the background with a little bit of um, like shine to it so that it would reflect the lights that I put inside. So to take this apart, if you just gently press down on the corners and lift up on the frame, it should come out pretty well for you.
then you can just peel off the frame all those little pieces of paper that didn't come off and then I went ahead and started peeling the paper off of the sign After peeling it, you can get a sanding block or a little bit of sandpaper and just go ahead and make your surface smooth so that you can put your peel and stick vinyl on there and you won't have any problems with bubbling or raised up areas. If, there, if it's a flat finish, then you don't see that stuff too much, but if you have any shine or reflection on the paper, then you will see that you'll see any bumps underneath it. I'm just using the back to trace out my paper. Then I will cut it out. Then you get your fingernail between the edges of the paper and the backing and then just carefully put that on. I've never tried to sand vinyl so maybe you could. Um, I'm not sure. If you do know whether or not you can sand vinyl you can put that in the comments. It might help someone else. I'm going to use my wooden ruler and just flatten this out. Get the bubbles and ridges out. And because it was sanded underneath, I have a nice, smooth finish. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to put the frame back down. Oh, and I also used some Fix-All. Yes, I did. I remember when I did this, which is just last week, that I wondered if I'm not used to working with vinyl, so I didn't know if the hot glue would stick or if it would pop off like it does on glass. So I used a little bit of Fix-All and it is still together. Fix-All is for long term hold and the hot glue is just going to keep the piece together while I get it all assembled. And I had a little bit of hot glue come out and I'm just cleaning that up with some tweezers. So in order to make this three-dimensional I need to have something to hold them up and out so I use these little blocks that came from the crafters area in Dollar Tree and they'll work great. You're gonna take your ornaments and place them inside in the position that you would like for them to be in. I always do this before I glue anything down. I want to be sure that everything is placed where I'd like it. I want to take this tree and cut it down because I want there to be some variation in the height. And these two little trees with the holes are going to be on the outside. I think the light will shine through them nicely. I'm going to use some dull scissors that I have and just kind of scratch into the surface where I want my edge to be. In my mind, if I did this, I could just bend it and it would just snap an even line but it didn't quite do that. It needed a little more a little more attention. So I got my bull nose pliers thanks to a watcher who informed me that that's the name of these pliers. I got those and used them to trim up the edge. 
and then I'm just going to sand it down so I don't have any splinters or rough edges. And so now I have a smaller tree to put on this edge. All right, now it's time to get these in order. Now if you use the tower blocks, they're a little bit longer and they are thinner. So you can see there's a difference in the in the size there, which will make a difference in the depth when you put these down. So they will be layered out and not sitting on top of one another. So it creates shadows and light, and that's what I want in this light up shadow box. Makes sense, right? Okay, you can get a string of lights from Dollar Tree if you'd like. These are just the ones on the copper line. I got these from Dirt Cheap, and they're essentially the same thing, but they originally came from Target. Now I'm going to use the hot glue. Didn't use E6000 on this. Just a little hot glue to tack it down. It doesn't weigh very much. We won't be touching it a lot, so it should stay there. If not, I'll fix it later. I got a new tripod for my anniversary, and it attaches to the table, so my angles and my filming should get much better soon. So if you've been around since the beginning, seeing all these wonky camera angles, then I thank you for your patience. Hopefully it's going to get better real soon. I'm going to keep trying until I feel like I get it exactly like I want it. And we're just layering. So the back is one layer. The Christmas tree that is solid is the next layer. Then the truck. And then when we get to the outside, these two trees are the outside layer. Cute so far, right? Looks like he's riding through the forest picking his Christmas tree out. So here are the lights. I've got my batteries in and checked them before I went through the process of using them. Always do that. Check your lights before you use them. Otherwise, you're going to have to disassemble the entire thing. And that's just, that's a pain if we can avoid it. So... Excuse me getting in the way a little bit. At the end of this line, there is, you can see there, there's some area where there is no light. And I'm using that area to go around the bottom of the box. And it's just a piece of that thin wiring. So the box will still sit flat. It, won't, it doesn't have any bulkiness to it. I'm just taping that down for now. And then pressing down the lights and winding them all through the back layer. And because this is on a thin wire, it's really easy to move around and manipulate. You can just press it down and twist it around wherever you want it. At the very end, there's a little light all the way to the end. So I went ahead and put that through the hole in the top of the Christmas tree. So there's a little uh, light up Christmas star on one of the trees. I'm just pressing that a little to the side so that it will secure itself. And then you want to be sure that you hide all of your wiring behind it. Oh my goodness, look how cute. Isn't that adorable? It's like a sunset. Behind the forest. It's very Scandinavian looking to me because there's no bright colors or anything. But of course, if you like bright colors, then feel free to use some 
some wild scrapbook paper and get your acrylic markers or your paint and color your ornaments before you put them down. You can even use flashing colorful lights if you like. So I'm just fixing a little area on the back with some glue and a piece of wire and a piece of paper that will hold my battery pack. I don't want to glue it down. And this way it's secured to the back and I can easily remove it. And I can use this triangle or this box for another project later if I want to. Isn't that cute? This really did turn out better than I thought. I did get some interest, some inspiration from Pinterest, so I'll give credit there. But I think it turned out cute. What do you think? Do you like this? What would you do differently? I think the kids are going to love it. As always, thanks for stopping by and crafting with me. I'd love it if you subscribe if you like these types of videos. And I hope you come back. See you again soon. Bye.